Let's talk about Charmaine Bucco. Charmaine Bucco, she's a fantastic cook. She's better than Audi in some ways. And plus, she's a licensed notary public. Now, not everyone has such a high opinion of Charmaine. Her ass may be improved, Artie, but uh, hey, hey, come on. Charmaine Bucco is the wife of Artie Bucco. Charmaine and Artie own and run the restaurant Vesuvio. We actually meet them in the very first episode. Arthur, please, grow up. Does the mind not rebel in any possible scenario under which dentist is sending the Don of New Jersey first class on a Norwegian steamship? Come on, Arthur. Somebody donated their kneecaps for those tickets. We see a new Vesuvio shortly thereafter because their old Vesuvio is burnt down. After Tony finds out that Junior plans to use it as a place to assassinate Pussy Malenga. She's been through so much. Charmaine has a good head on her shoulders. Charmaine's a strong woman. Anyway, she's gonna find out in the course of the investigation. <sighs> Everything is going so good. The new exterminators? I got faith. The owner is Portuguese. They're sticklers. I feel so wonderful. We're up and running again. Oh, you said you had something to tell me. I like the bar stools. What are you doing? You're gonna stay in that bar all day? What? I'm shooting a little pool. I want the primer and I've been scraping. You have. Arthur, I can really use your help. Charmaine has known the Sopranos for quite a while. She actually grew up in the neighborhood too, and went to high school with Tony and Carmela, along with the others who attended that school, including Artie Bucco. You grew up in the neighborhood? Don't pretend like you don't know what Tony Soprano is capable of. What really does it for her is when Artie starts talking about going into business with Tony. That she won't stand for. Oh, what are you so pissed because I told you you couldn't go into business with Tony? No, tell me fucking anything, Charmaine. For your information, I'm going into business with Tony. The business deal that Artie's talking about is just one comment that Tony made offhand, probably to make Artie feel better because he was a mess, so for what that's worth. Call me tomorrow. Got a business opportunity over in Newark. Jesus fucking Christ. She suddenly wants to play hide the boo damn blank with you. Charmaine has an interesting timeline on The Sopranos. She's there from the very beginning, all the way up through to nearly the very end. We don't actually see her in the finale, but we do see her restaurant, Vesuvio. Now, in terms of her activity on the show... We have no intention of pressing charges. It's just gotta stop. She's really the most involved, I'd say, seasons one, three, Perhaps six. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but Arthur, you have to plate the salmon. Arthur, the kid is a hood, okay? If he feels protective of his girlfriend, you should just leave it alone. She's a slow learner. She's a nice girl. And as predicted, the customers love her. With her little stories from the old country. In season two, we only see her briefly. In Big Girls Don't Cry, actually when Furio, the master cheesemaker, starts working at Vesuvio. And then in season four, we see her a couple of times, one of which is when she tells Artie that... What do you think? She suddenly wants to play hide the boo damn blank with you? What's your fucking problem? All these years I sat here and I kept my mouth shut. I don't want you and your boys coming in here. And look what happened. Look what you've done to my husband. Artie? I'm trying to help him. Yeah, well, good luck. Because he's a friggin' mess. Yes, Artie was a mess. Yes, at a certain point, their marriage was certainly a mess. But can we say that Tony was the cause of all that? Keep in mind, when she's talking to Tony, when she says that it's his fault, basically, that Artie's a mess, this is season three, episode 10. Now, the whole Artie $50,000 loan thing that happens in season four. So whatever involvement Tony may have had there, 
though of course it was Artie who made the decision to want to do it in the first place. I don't think that Charmaine can rightfully blame Tony for their marital woes. In season one, episode three, Denial, Anger, Acceptance, Carmela hires Artie and Charmaine to cater for a benefit that she's having at their home to raise money for the local children's hospital. There are a couple of instances where Carmela acts pretty nasty. The first is when Charmaine's over at her house and they're doing the planning and she yells at the housekeeper. Una! There is fingerprints all over the break front. I want this place to sparkle. Sure. Charmaine. Now, Charmaine is not going to forget that one so easily. And we see the outcome of that in one of their next conversations. It happened so long ago. You and Tony, you, you weren't even married. It's probably silly for me to even bring it up now. That's Charmaine's way of saying, Carmela, when you wave your little fingers at me, don't think that I'm below you. You were down at the show with your parents that summer. You and Tony were on the outs. He called me. He did? One thing led to another. We started dating each other and... Carmela, I slept with them. You slept with, with Tony? Really, it wasn't for me. <laughs> Camilla, what I'm trying to say is stop worrying about me. Really. I could have been you. I could have been in your position. But I didn't want to be. I mean, we both made our choices. I'm fine with mine. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that Charmaine's perfect. Charmaine, like Artie, gets a pass in cases where other people may not. For example, when she tells Tony Sell and Polly that... Listen, I thought you'd want to know. Two guys over there at that table? Yeah. I think they're FBI. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, enjoy. Something's got to keep the customers coming back, and it's not going to be you mushad the raviolis lately. So we hear joking about the FBI. Since when is that funny? We also see Charmaine in one of Tony's dreams, specifically the test dream. We see her in a couple different places, first at Vesuvio, and then in Tony's bed at the Plaza Hotel. Oh, God, Tony, it's so much better than when we were kids. See? She likes it when you rub her muzzle. Yeah, what about Charmaine? Charmaine? Mm-hmm, I know all about you. What? I didn't do anything. Yeah, you did in high school. High school? Don't try to deny it. Oh, okay, high school, okay. By the time we're in season six, Charmaine and Artie are back together. Did Charmaine tell you? We're getting back together. No, she didn't mention it. That's terrific. We're both very happy. Now, speaking of being happy, very happy. At the end of the series, in the penultimate episode, Carmela and Tony are eating at Vesuvio, and Artie and Charmaine come up to their table, start making small talk. So, Med was in here with Patrick Parisi? Yes. Yeah. We are very happy. Very happy. Is it true what she said? She's quitting pre-med? Yes, thank God. Yeah. We are so relieved. What is she going to do now? Charmaine brings up the fact that Meadow is now dating Patrick Parisi. She then mentions to Carmela, a little awkward, maybe. <laughs> a little awkward, though, maybe. Patsy still works for Tony? He's an underling? Hey, yeah, Cupid's dart lands. Now, if you ask me whether I think Charmaine should have mentioned the whole Tony thing to Carmela, I mean, the mature thing would probably be to not. But I understand why Charmaine felt so insulted. So, okay. I get it. Now, later on, at the very end of the series, do I think she needed to go on about, oh, being a little awkward that... Patrick and Meadow are together 
because, you know, he's Tony's underling? No. Now, it's like, you're kind of getting into the mud. And I feel like Charmaine did that almost to make herself feel better. Or, in the alternative, to make Carmella feel like shit. Charmaine was all up in arms about Carmella treating her like an underling at her home. When, by the way, they were getting paid to work there. So, Charmaine wasn't there as a guest. But perhaps Charmaine is concerned. Perhaps she thinks that Meadow is going to end up just being a stay-at-home mom, a housewife. Maybe that's behind some of it. So, with that said, while I may criticize Charmaine for certain things, I'm not in any way saying, oh, she's, you know, morally corrupt or the most morally bankrupt. Not at all. Obviously, she's a civilian, someone who has no interest in organized crime. So I just want to say that as well. Please, don't curse. The minute you use profanity, you give them the high moral ground to do whatever they please. So, what do you think about Charmaine Bugo? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.